Welcome to Information Service Engineering. This is lecture number two, Natural Language Processing, part one. In this section of the lecture, we want to talk a little bit about natural language processing applications. So what kind of applications usually are performed with the help of natural language processing? First thing that might come into your mind is optical character recognition. We all have heard about OCR, so this is the conversion of images of typed, handwritten or printed text into machine encoded text. And often this task is solved today in combination with computer vision, with pattern recognition or artificial intelligence techniques. Although during the last years OCR has made tremendous progress, it's far from being perfect, especially if it comes to, let's say, the recognition of handwritten historical texts, for example, that are written in foreign languages, in foreign writing styles and scripts. So this, of course, is still a, a problem. And of course, optical character recognition um, requires a lot of pre-processing and also post-processing. Because simply recognizing the simple letters doesn't do so often, then post-processing steps, for example, try to combine what has been recognized with statistical language models. And based on these statistical language models or dictionaries, then in the end, the text not only of a single word, but then of a complete sentence will be post-processed and improved. And finally, then in the end, recognized. So optical character recognition still is a demanding task, although it's more or less solved in the end. Uh, uh, set aside, let's say, a few uh, exotic and, and specific things like, for example, handwritten writings of historical texts. Okay, what else? Simple think of uh, spell checking or grammar checking. So not only your text processor, but also here on the web. So for example, if you try to Google, let's say, some websites, if you have a question that you type into your favorite search engine, so what usually happens there is, of course, um, there is a spell checking automatically taking place. And if you do a simple typo, then often these search engines, they try to find things for you already on the improved, the updated version, the correct version of what you wanted to type. So this is correcting spell or grammar. Rather similar is the task of word prediction that also most prominently, for example, happens during you type in a search query or, for example, if you're typing in a text on your mobile, then, of course, uh, this, this autocorrection function, this is nothing else than word prediction because it simply tries to uh, continue what you are already writing or what you have written so far with the most probable, let's say, word. So it will try to complement the most probable word or sentence that might follow after that. And uh, in Google, for example, when you there uh, type your query, you can clearly see what are, let's say, the most uh, probable search queries with the same prefix, starting with the same prefix that, that you are doing here. So this is always a nice exercise. And since we are talking about information retrieval, Information retrieval itself, of course, is a natural language processing task. And this is all about finding relevant information according to the user's information need, which is in itself expressed in a query. And there are lots of models how to do that. There is a simple Boolean model, which nowadays rarely is used. There is a vector space model that many of the uh, early search engines were using, or you are using what is called inverse indexes or something else. So there are lots of information retrieval techniques that usually are looking for, let's say, syntactic distances between words to find out about word and syntactical similarities and stuff like that. Okay. Let's come to the more, let's say, demanding task, text categorization. Most prominent of all is the spam filter, for example, of your email program. And of course, this spam filter in your email program is trained to identify automatically to separate non-spam emails from spam emails, which means useful emails from spam, crap, noise. But of course, they have to be trained according to predefined categories. And in text categorization, of course, there is more than just text filtering. So you want to find out lots of things about a text, for example, in a newspaper. If you simply have the newspaper 
let's say title of, of an article you can find out whether this belongs to sports or this belongs to politics or this belongs to cultural issues and stuff so this is text categorization to put things into a specific category a special category for example nowadays rather important is also uh, fake news detection so there are fake news detectors out on the web you simply can try them out so for all of these examples you see here i have listed in the slides the links and then you can try out these examples here for example is a website that claims by simply giving it the uri of an arbitrary website which contains text to find out whether this is likely to be fake news or not. So this is usually uh, performed with the help of neural networks that try to find similarity to fake news or non-fake news websites. A more demanding task is text summarization, which also has to do with categorization because when you summarize a text, you have to find out which parts of the text are important and which are not important, which means this is also a kind of categorization task to find out which are the important sentences, the important content of the text and which are not important. And here is also a tool so that I found for you, which also generates, uh, generates sh short summaries of one or more documents, you know, and um, there you can easily also see with this tool when you give it the URI of an article that you want to analyze and um, you, you look not simply at the result, there is also an analyze option and then you can see which kind of sentences this tool is considering as important and which not. So this is also a rather interesting and also challenging task. Another task that we have already spoken of is question answering. So you know, nowadays you can ask any search engine any kind of question and of course it will answer your question. So question answering is automatically to answer questions posed by humans in a natural language. And um, this, for example, can be achieved with the help of knowledge graphs plus, of course, machine learning, deep learning technologies. Question answering has a long tradition and also its heyday started around 10 years ago and there it was rather, rather prominent in the media. So probably some of you might have heard it that now 10 years ago, IBM Watson, interesting program, which was able to answer questions in given in natural language in the style of the Jeopardy quiz game show. And, and Watson really participated in the quiz game show against the human champions of this show and was able to win this kind of competition. So this was really an amazing feat in 2011, 10 years ago. What you have to do to answer questions properly, you have to extract information previously from, let's say, large text corpora. So this is information extraction. Information extraction means automatically extracting, extracting structured information from unstructured or semi-structured machine readable documents. So what you do there, for example, if you have a Wikipedia page like this Wikipedia page of Neil Armstrong, what you can do there, for example, Wikipedia pages contain this kind of info box, which is a table summarizing the most important facts of the person, of the location or of the thing which is described on that page. And from this info box, from this table, usually then a knowledge graph can be constructed, like, for example, for the DBpedia, which is the semantic version of the Wikipedia. So this is a knowledge graph constructed out of the Wikipedia encyclopedia um, simply by doing information extraction on these kind of tables, which I here refer to as info boxes. So this is a prominent task of information extraction. What else in natural language processing is interesting? Besides auto-completion, we already had this, there is also entity suggestion slash auto-suggestion. What is that? So this means predicting a potential knowledge-based entity from ambiguous text inputs according to the intention of the user, which means you try to find 
the, the, the fitting or a well-fitting entity for a given surface form. You have a surface form, so this means you have a text and the text may be, for example, like in this example here, fog, and you want to find out what is it. And there are lots of possibilities. And of course, uh, you need some tools that are able to suggest the right entity. What does fog mean? This might be Phileas Fogg, which is a yeah, fictional character in a Jules Verne novel, 80 Days Around the World. Or it can also be lots of other things. As you see here, it might be an artist, uh, a musician or a politician. So there are other people with the same name. So therefore you have ambiguity and you have to determine and to find out which one is the correct one. And you can only do this usually by analyzing the context in which this ambiguous word is used. We will talk about exactly this kind of problems later on in more detail. Also, another rather prominent uh, application is machine translation. So you translate a text from long one language in another. And also this in recent years has uh, gained uh, lots of popularity and a tremendous, let's say, improvement in the quality of uh, exactly the results that have been achieved. So especially if you translate between rather frequent languages, like for example, from Spanish to English, from German to English, or from English to French, for example. So this produces very, very good results because um, their machine translation is based on deep learning tasks where they were using millions or even billions of documents that exist in different languages and that have been used, these kind of language models, to improve the machine translation process. Another rather simple, but also important, um, let's say, uh, application in natural language processing is sentiment analysis. There you try to identify the sentiments or the opinions that have been stated in a text, simply to find out whether it's positive, negative or neutral, or you can even define, let's say, more subtle, subtle or more sophisticated categories. So, for example, you might detect hate speech in there and stuff like that. Um, and uh, what you can do there, for example, so this is also a small example where um, you, you might, for example, take a, a movie critics and simply then see whether, you know, this fits according to the sentiment analyzer to the given scores that the people have voted for the movie, let's say on the plus or on the negative side. Next would be then speech recognition. We all know these uh, new artificial uh, assistants, these intelligent assistants like Siri, one of the first one, or Alexa. And um, they, of course, they try to recognize spoken language, transform it to text. And then, of course, based on this speech recognition, then perform question answering and all of these other kind of natural processing, natural language processing tasks that we have already spoken of. And while there is speech recognition, there is also speech synthesis and I have brought you also a speech synthesis demo here. So simply click on that link. We try this here and then you have a web speech synthesis demo here. You give here um, an example sentence like, for example, my hovercraft is full of eels. Yeah, no funny sentence. People who know Monty Python know where it's from. And then you simply try here speak. You have several different voices. And My hovercraft is full of eels. So this doesn't really sound like English. Let's select another one. So there are more sophisticated models here. A Google US English, for example, is a rather good one. My hovercraft OS full of eels. Oh, I have a mistake here. I have to write here is. Then it sounds better. My hovercraft is full of eels. And now with a German accent. My hovercraft is full of yields. So this sounds more like me. I'm trying to avoid the German heavy accent I have. Okay, let's continue. So besides um, speech recognition and speech synthesis, there are then also dialogue systems, which then try to keep a dialogue running between the user and the system. So this is, let's say, some continuous question answering going on where a system tries to get in a dialogue with the user. So this is exactly what your intelligent agents nowadays are doing. Okay, so these were a bunch of NLP applications. And in the next section of the lecture, we were looking at more 
uh, let's say, detailed techniques of natural language processing to learn more what exactly this lecture is all about and how these techniques can be applied.